Good evening, everybody. How are you? You've come out in the dark. Look, it's nearly dark now. The nights are drawing in. But then you get the beautiful autumn leaves, don't you? To make up for these things, isn't it lovely? So there's lots of things to look forward to this winter. Anyway, welcome. Great to see you. Great to see you. My name's Andrew. I'm on the ministry team here. People who lead the services, that team. Uh, if you don't know who I am. And um, just before Jesus' death on the cross, which we'll be going to bring later in the service as we take communion together, just before his death, Jesus, uh, it's recorded in John 14, Jesus gives his disciples peace, a peace that doesn't stop, a peace between God and us and between all of us too. And he says thinking forward to the difficulties he knows they're going to face the disciples he knows they're going to suffer he they knows they're going to find it really hard when uh, he dies and even actually when he's risen they're going to find it hard and feel alone and he knows that and so he says not to be troubled don't be troubled he says don't be afraid and I, I thought of this picture with that baby in its father's arms uh, he, Jesus said to them in John 14, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And as winter comes and, you know, the, the, the levels of alert go up, we might be a bit troubled. In fact, I'm sure we are. And we might be a bit afraid. But Jesus understands that. He understands what we're going through. But the great news is that he gives us this peace that only God can give. He gives us this through his Holy Spirit living in us who follow him to help us today. And also he can help us to be peacemakers through that same spirit. And that's what Chris is going to speak to us about later on. Okay? So that's what the sermon's going to be about. So as we, as we hear this song, and as we worship in our hearts, and I'm afraid we can't sing, we're not allowed to, but let's welcome that God of peace in troubled times into our lives. Let's ask him to fill us with his love, his, his love that casts out fear, his perfect love that casts out fear as we worship together. So please stand, if you're able to, as we sing together. We're going to sing only a holy God. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else can make every king bow down? Who else can whisper in darkness trembles? Only a holy God. What are the beauty to man such praises? What are the splendor that shines the sun? What are the majesty rules with justice? Only a holy God. Come and be old the wonder, the only cry out, sing Seems like fire. What other power can raise the dead? What other name remains undefeated? Only a holy God. 
take a seat as we move towards uh, confession. Who else can rescue us from our failings? Only that holy God, holy God. And as we come to God this evening, if we reflect back on today or this week, the last few days, we might be aware that we haven't always reflected that peace uh, that God gives us in our daily lives. We might not have always reflected that to others. So we can have the next slide up, please. And later in the reading it says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And let's ponder now on those words. And when I do, I, I feel a bit uncomfortable because I know I haven't been like that all week. And in a moment, we'll confess our sins. Let's have a moment's silence. If we could have the next slide, that we've got a confession on there which reflects that reading. So if you just look at those words. And let's confess our sins together. So Lord, we confess that we often don't draw on your wisdom from heaven through your spirit. We aren't always pure and peace-loving. Lord, we confess that we often don't draw on your wisdom from heaven through your spirit. We aren't always considerate and submissive to each other out of reverence for Christ. Lord, we confess that we often don't draw on your wisdom from heaven through your spirit. We aren't always full of mercy and good fruit. Lord, we confess that we often don't draw on your wisdom from heaven through your spirit. We aren't always impartial and sincere. Lord, please forgive us these sins and others that mar your image in us. Help us to be peacemakers and to bear good fruit for you. Amen. 
And Lord, we thank you that you are the one who rescues us from our failings. And you can't wait to forgive us when we come to you and admit the truth, admit what we're like. And then you can't wait to cleanse us from our unrighteousness and fill us with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, we've got a couple of notices which are important. And the big thank you, first of all, to uh, the people who are involved in delivering the parish letters. Does anyone here deliver parish letters? I don't, but well done. Thank you. Well, there are some more there for you out there. <laughs> and the new ones are at the back of the church, so if you could collect and deliver them, that would be fantastic. But we wanted to thank you for delivering those letters in advance and for all the times you've done it in the past. So, yeah, and it's a great thing that we can send out stuff to the parish. We've got one actually at home, and it was very encouraging. So that's good. And then tomorrow night, Monday night, the annual parochial church meeting is 7.45 to 9 o'clock. And um, as I said, Monday the 19th, and you're very welcome to join us. And if you're on the electoral roll, you can vote as well if that's needed. And please follow the Zoom link sent to you on the Friday letter that you got on your email that in the weekly update, Friday the 16th of October. If you're like me, you get loads of emails and you can never find things. So it's the 16th of October. Look, look for it there and you'll get the link. And there are papers attached too, which you can read. Uh, do come along to this important read, uh, meeting on Zoom. I don't think I have any other notices. But now I'm going to hand over to Victoria, who's going to read from the Bible, and then Chris is going to speak to us. Hello, everyone. Right, we're reading this evening from uh, the book of James. And it's uh, chapter 3, and we're looking at verses 13 to 18. I'm not going to give you a Bible page reference because we're not holding Bibles, but please use whatever Bible you have with you. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. <clears throat> But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, and then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good to see you this evening. Um, and if you're watching the recording online afterwards, then good evening or good morning or good afternoon or good night or whenever you're watching it. I don't know. Um, my name's Chris. It's lovely to be with you. Um, let's pray together and then we we'll look at this passage together. Uh, Heavenly Father, you tell us that if any of us lacks wisdom... Uh, we should ask you, who give generously to all without finding fault. So, Father, we ask you tonight, please give us your wisdom for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, last year, I had a disagreement within church. I won't say the detail. Uh, in the course of this disagreement, though, I sent uh, an email that caused uh, some upset. 
uh, for at least a couple of reasons. Uh, first, I hadn't explained something I should have done. And second of all, some of my email was uh, pretty blunt, actually. So there was understandably um, some upset. And now you might think, OK, is that such a big deal? I mean, these things happen, right? Well, in fact, the impact of this disagreement was pretty big. For example, as a result, I think it's fair to say that everyone involved found being at church harder. Really? I mean, do you naturally want to be somewhere where you just know there's going to be some tension? It's harder. It's harder. And for myself, I noticed myself kind of backing off people involved a bit. Maybe you know that kind of thing. Um, a relationship is tense, and you feel like, I just I don't want to be there. And before you know it, you're backing off, you're avoiding them, that kind of thing. Disagreements leading to a breaking, frankly, a breaking of peace. Our subject tonight is about how to make peace in our church. Uh, saying peace, peace be with you, peace be with you, that's easy. Uh, making peace, that's hard. That's hard. Uh, James, the writer of this letter, is very concerned about making peace in local churches. Uh, remember his key themes, if you've been here before. Uh, he said, uh, what you believe needs to be lived out, have a deep impact on your behavior. That's one thing. Also, our lives need to be joined up. Not contradictory, but consistent. And in the, here in the middle of chapters, James addresses not just our kind of individual lives, uh, but our lives as church community. Are we together living out what we believe? Are we together living joined up lives? Are we doing that? And last Sunday evening, we heard uh, that the most dangerous things that we have together are our tongues. We boast, we curse, very dangerous. And the thing is, we are a spiritual family together. Uh, but we disagree about things. We have different opinions, talents, different gifts, different passions, different ideas. Not only that, but we have different disappointments, different sadnesses, different uh, emotional scars, that kind of thing, different problems. So James says, well, with all that in mind, how on earth can we make peace in our church? And James says, through peace-loving humility. Peace-loving humility. That's our headline tonight, really. Peace-loving humility. So an angry message pops up in your inbox. Feels so annoying. How to respond? Peace-loving humility. Or you're chatting in a church group, and someone says a comment that just you really disagree with. So frustrating. How to, how to respond? Peace-loving humility. Or someone in your, your serving team turns up really late and doesn't seem to care. Feels so rude. How to respond to that? Peace-loving humility. Or even, I don't know, on the street, you bump into uh, that person at church who just, mm, you just find difficult. You just want to run away. You want to, how to respond? Peace-loving humility. Uh, so we'll go through our passage in a, a few sections. So let's have a look at it together. So do open up your Bible again if you have one with you. Um, and we'll go through this. So let's start with verse 13. James says, question our wisdom. That's the first thing. Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Question your wisdom. I mean, think about it. What actually is wisdom? What is it? Take a second and maybe kind of answer that in your heads. What is it? What we need to understand is that wisdom, as described in the scriptures, is different to how our world generally understands it. Uh, so uh, you might have seen this banner uh, nearby, uh, a couple of streets away on Dover Road. Has anyone seen that? Uh, yeah, it's there. You might have just not noticed it. There's this banner up there. It's quite interesting. Um, and it says this. It says, Wisdom is the ability to use your experience and knowledge in order to make sensible decisions and judgments. Okay. Now, I quite like that. That definition of wisdom is pretty helpful in many ways. But it also brings problems. You see, all our knowledge, all our experience, are, they're all limited, aren't they? 
They're limited. And because they're limited, they can directly kind of contradict other people's knowledge and experience, of course. So no wonder kind of so-called wise people, we just kind of clash all the time, of course. Uh, take a really everyday example. A bit silly, really. But uh, last Friday morning, uh, on my day off, my wife, Karis, and I had an argument in the kitchen. Okay? Uh, we were making a simple meal uh, for friends, and it had gone a little bit wrong. And one of us thought we could not serve this food to our friends, and one of us thought we could serve this food to our friends. Uh, now, Karis and I are quite sensible people, I think. Uh, but her sensible judgment clashed with my sensible judgment. And so we argued. So this wisdom did not help us at that point at all. It just didn't help us. Because at that moment, we did not have humility. We were both kind of puffed up in our hearts. We were both, my way is the right way. Yeah? So when any of us clash, this wisdom doesn't help us, really. So what's the alternative? Well, the vital insight from this verse is that real wisdom is always, always humble. Humble. Uh, real wisdom in the Bible uh, starts with Christians are uh, limited, sinful creatures in relationship with a God who is glorious and majestic and creator all righteous, yeah? So compared with God, are we clever? No. Are we good? No. Are we always in the right? No. Not compared with God? No. Do we really know what's best for ourselves and for the world? No. Humility. Humility. And James says, question your wisdom. Is our wisdom humble wisdom? So, in our relationships with anyone at church, are we being humble in that? Let's think of some examples, really. But, so, think of someone who sends you an angry message, or said that comment, or who didn't say sorry, or you just find it difficult. Think of that person. The, the world's wisdom says... What do I think is right to do now? That's what the world says. Humble wisdom says, what does God think is right in this situation? And what's right to God is peace-loving humility. Now, James helps us out here. Uh, what he does is he, he invites us to be honest about how we're doing with this. He says, look at our behavior. What does it show Verse 13, he says, Is it, verse 13, is it a good life? Deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom? Is it that? Have a close look. Look at the detail of your behavior. God's not going to condemn you. Jesus died for you. Your sins are paid for. If you trust in him, you know, that's okay. So, so have a close look. How are you doing? Think back to my uh, disagreement I talked about at the start. As I've reflected on that, it's really helped me to look closely at my behavior then and to ask, was I humble? Was I humble? So I've looked over the email I sent and I've replayed the conversations I've had and I realized that at crucial points, I got quite defensive and that wasn't humble. It wasn't humble. Question your wisdom. That's the first step. Uh, then what's next? Verses 14 to 16 uh, quieten your envy. So verse 14. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Bitter envy and selfish ambition. These can come out in all sorts of ways. You know, so uh, stoking gossip against someone you're annoyed at. Or you're angry when someone gets praised and you don't. Or it maddens you when you've got a great idea, you think, but someone says, no, I disagree with that. It's like, what, what do you mean you disagree with that? Oh, it's like some of those things can maybe kind of feel small, but you might think that they feel small, but that, 
that that's not kind of bitter envy or selfish ambition. They might think that, but, and, it, and it might not be that. It might not be envy and selfish ambition, but it is if, to any degree, we just find ourselves wanting to kind of assert ourselves. So, you know, kind of any thoughts like, I'm so annoyed, I wish I could just uh, shake you up. I just, I just want to get my way in this, that kind of thing. James says, well, at that moment, he says, do not boast about it. Do you see that phrase there? So that uh, urge there to assert yourself, don't put any confidence in it. Stop. That is not a wise path to walk down. Now, I do need to make clear that what James is not saying is, if you have a strong opinion, it's got to be wrong. He's not saying that. You know, if your opinion, your reasons, uh, uh, they might really be fair. But if it becomes something more than that, what he's talking about, if it becomes, I've got to get my way in this, that's become a dangerous moment. It might have become envy or selfish ambition. James says, at that point, whatever it is, at that point, you've got to stop, pause, don't get there. Asserting yourself is not the way to go about it. Now, in case James's listeners need any more convincing about how um, serious this is, he gives some pretty big extra reasons here. Um, he says, first of all, he says that envy, that wanting to assert yourself, that, now it might sound a position of strength, but in actual fact, that envy is you being influenced by evil, he says. So look with me at verse 15. Verse 15, such so-called wisdom does not come down from heaven, so it's not godly wisdom, but rather it's earthly, it's earthbound, it fails to consider God's. It's unspiritual, so it's from the part inside us ruled not by God, but by our own kind of human reason and feeling, it's unspiritual. And strongest of all, do you see, it's demonic, it's from evil influence. Now, how does that make you feel reading that? Now, that is strong language. Do you realize how vulnerable we can be to evil influence? We don't want that, do we? So what was going on in my heart when I wrote that kind of blunt email I mentioned earlier? Well, James says, well, at that moment when I got defensive, I so wanted things my way that my heart wanted evil at that point. And that's been really convicting for me to think about. Really convicting. Uh, there's one more reason for quietening our envy. Uh, James says, uh, because it has a deadly, deadly effect as well. So verse 16. He says, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder, chaos, and every evil practice. In other words, envy destroys. It eats away your church. It pulls people apart. And you might not even have a healthy church left over at the end of it. So, quieten our envy. Stop, don't go there. Never assert ourselves over other people. And so to verses um, 17 to 18. James doesn't want, to, doesn't want to condemn his readers. He wants to help them. So he changes his tone here. He says, effectively, be quick to seek peace. Be quick to seek peace. He's saying, in our relationships with anyone at church, make effort to, to move towards each other so that peace can grow. Now, how do we be quick to do this? First of all, ask for God's help. Ask for God's help. If you just go on to the next slide, just to have those coming down there. Ask for God's help. So this is the, um, uh, the upwards direction of peacemaking, us and God, okay? Verse 17, he says this. He says, what we need is the wisdom that comes from heaven. Uh, real wisdom, as, we, as we've seen, isn't from uh, intellectual knowledge or even experience. It's not that. It's from heaven. It's a gift, and only God can give it. So ask for it. 
Ask for his uh, spirit to fill you again. You know, all believers have all the Holy, Holy Spirit at all the time. So ask for God's spirit to help you. Please, God, I need to think rightly here. I need humility here. Please, can I help me? Ask for God's help. Second, uh, act in peace. Act in peace. This is the, um, the outward direction of peacemaking you know, between us and our brothers and sisters. Act in peace. So making peace, it's not just passive, it's active, it's deliberate. Um, it's, it's, it's not about kind of never discussing tricky things. It's not that. It's about behaving with others constructively. So look with me at verse 17. Verse 17, he says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, is what? It's first of all pure. So, so God adores it. Then peace-loving, which is considerate. In other words, um, we're okay with kind of yielding to others, not demanding strict claims. We're okay being approached. We're okay approaching others if that would help. Doing it as friends. Considerate. And submissive, not a word we often like, but um, meaning kind of we're okay deferring to others if we need to. Submissive, then full of mercy and good fruit. So you can actually kind of do something out of love for other people to help. And then impartial, so treat everyone fairly and with grace. And sincere, be genuine, don't be a fake. How's that list for you? How's that list for you? What stands out for you from that? What stands out for your heart? Perhaps, where has the strain of COVID been testing and stretching you? Where in this list do you feel weakest right now, here tonight? I've been thinking this kind of for myself, really. I mean, I'm personally, naturally, I'm a peacemaker. That's my default, really. Uh, and you might think, great, I'll be great at making peace. Well, not quite. Um, being a peacemaker can be, not being a pacemaker, that's something completely different. Being a peacemaker uh, can make me want to run away from things, from difficult things, you know, take the easy route. Yeah? And COVID, I would say for me, kind of only kind of amplified those uh, tendencies. Now I've realized I need God's Spirit to grow in me, especially in a couple of ways, I think. So first in being sincere, so not pretending things are okay when they need addressing. And secondly, being full of mercy and good fruit for me, you know, to so deliberately approaching someone in a kind way, a way that would help and have a good impact. For me, that's for me. What about you? What would it be for you? Ask for God's help. Act in peace. And then expect good fruit. Verse 18. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So righteousness, that's a conduct pleasing to God, will grow. It can take time. Uh, spiritual fruit, like uh, uh, normal fruit, doesn't grow overnight, it doesn't. It takes time, it takes tending, it takes care, it takes patience. But it will grow. Again, think of my disagreements uh, last year. I am so grateful to them and to God for how the people involved in that uh, have graciously moved towards me. And I tried to do the same. They have shown me warmth, they have shown me concern and kindness. Uh, they have said how they have prayed for me. Peace has been growing between us. That's how God works. How do we make peace in our church? Answer, peace-loving humility. Question our wisdom, quiet in our envy, and be quick to seek peace. So can I ask, where can you help grow peace here at St. John's? What about you? 
Uh, two things for us uh, before we finish. Uh, first, how about a specific matter for us as a church at the moment, which is we do need to think how does this kind of peacemaking speak into our conversations about racism? Partly because it's particularly on our minds at the moment. And, and three weeks ago, we had our open to questions evening on race and racism. And many people have rightly said, can, can we can just keep this conversation going? I also believe that specifically in terms of racism and church, well, racism is a peacemaking issue in part. So God would have it that talking about racism and any kind of prejudice is something to help heal hurt and to bind us closer together. And part of that is really through the very way we can even talk about it. Uh, we need to talk with peace-loving humility. Uh, what does that mean for how we talk about it? Well, remember, real wisdom is considerate. Considerate. So it's got to mean all of us uh, treating each other as friends, surely. Not using each other as a school project, as it were. Not kind of, I'm talking to you because I've been told I need to understand about racism. Well, no, not that. Not projects, but people. Friends. I think it means each of us questioning our wisdom. You know, I've always assumed this or that, but maybe I've got that wrong. Perhaps especially for those of us who have not experienced racism, and I include myself in that. Let's remember that some of our brothers and sisters who have experienced racism have been humble and patient for a long time, wanting to help people understand the personal impact on them, but sad when that's been rebuffed in the past. So let's not make it harder for anyone by kind of jumping to question everything that's said or you know, jumping to question other people's wisdom. We need to question my own wisdom first. That's how we talk together. We need to listen with humility. Humility. Humble that how we understand things might be wrong. Humble that things I've said and done might have been harmful. Humility. Peace, loving humility. Oh, we're coming towards a close now. As we do that, we need to know, we need to know that to have any chance of growing as a church with peace, loving humility... We have to spend time at the cross, at the cross. What do we see when we gaze on Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crucified? What do we see? You know, his death was the loving sacrifice before God to, to pay the debt of all that we do wrong against God if we put our trust in Jesus. What do we see when we gaze on him Hanging there, frankly, dead. What do we see? We see that it's our so-called wisdom that killed him. The world, in its wisdom, murdered the wisest man who ever lived. That's us, effectively. That's how unwise we are, naturally. Our wisdom killed the Son of God. We also see that it's our envy that killed him. It's our sin that needs the Son of God to sacrifice his life for us, to pay our debt. Our envy killed him in that sense. Finally, we see that it's, it's his ultimate peace-loving humility that killed him too. The Son of God chose to humble himself down from heaven to become human and die. He chose that. Why? To make peace between us and God. And through that, to make peace between each other in his church. We want to make peace in our church. We want to grow as a, a community in peace-loving humility. Keep gazing on our crucified Lord and Saviour, Jesus. There, for us, is wisdom and peace. 
Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, uh, we admit that we can be very quick to accuse, attack, envy, and assert ourselves. Sorry. We're sorry. Thank you that you made peace with us at the greatest cost imaginable in Jesus. So please help us by your Spirit in us to move us towards each other in humility. Make us actually a body of humble peace together. And through that, may you show us and the people who see us just how wonderful you are. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue in prayer now. If we could have that next slide up, that'd be great. Thank you. And I'll have some quite a lot of silence in this section. Um, so just be still and know that God of peace. That God of wisdom is with us now. Now, if we move to the next slide, think about, I've got the world, the nations, and uh, world, nation, and church as topics. And I'll give you some ideas, but do pray about those areas. And, um, but if something comes particularly to your mind, pray along those lines, because the Holy Spirit's showing you that. So we pray for Armenia, Azerbaijan, that conflict there. We pray for peace there. We pray about the tensions in France with the teacher being murdered by apparently an Islamic extremist. We pray for peace there. We pray about the continuing COVID-19 crisis worldwide. We pray for healing there. And do lift the Lord anything else that's on your mind, particularly to do with the world. We lift our nation to you. We think of the uh, local area lockdowns. We think of the businesses and people with the mental health. So many effects of this virus, apart from the, the disease itself. We pray for all who have the virus, the NHS dealing with it and helping people. We pray for your wisdom, Lord, for... Um, governments and local leaders as they try to tackle this situation.
we think of the um, EU negotiations which seem to have come to a halt and pray for that situation and the future of our nation and our nation's trading with other nations. We think of the homeless, we think of the unemployed, we think of people on furlough, people uncertain about the future. Do lift the Lord any, anything else to do with this nation that might be on your mind. And we lift the church to you and pray, um, as Chris prayed, for peace, for unity, and for the wisdom that only comes from you, Lord, for all of us. Help us with all the stresses and strains created by the uh, COVID-19 situation. Help us to draw others to you, Lord, to help others, even when social contact is restricted. Give us wisdom through your spirit how to do this in our situation, in whatever we're doing this week. And help us too to be peacemakers throughout the week, bearing good fruit for you, Jesus. And if there's anything on your mind, particularly to do with anyone in the church, or maybe you'll pray for three people, do lift them to the Lord. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you for your great wisdom and the peace that you give. Please accept these prayers, Lord, for we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to move in sung worship now to sing Amazing Grace. And uh, if you're able to, please do stand. Chains are gone, I've been saved. 
set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing The Lord has promised good to me His word, my hope secures He will my shield and portion be As long as thy future Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbid to shine. The God you call me here below will be. Please do have a seat. Now, as we take communion this evening, which will only uh, be bread due to the COVID restrictions, we can't share the common cup. Um, please wear your face coverings as you come up and follow the arrows. There are no arrows. We'll come down the middle. So there are arrows. I can't see. Oh, yes, there they are. I can't see them from here. And. Um, so if you're on this side, go round there and go back that way. If you're on that side, go around there and that, back that way, if, you, if that's all right with you. And um, please come up with your mask on, and then we, we will be very careful. I've prepared this very carefully. Clean hands, mask, everything. And we'll just drop it into your hand, and then you can take your mask off and, and eat the bread. And if, if for any reason you, you don't want to uh, take the bread, that's fine, but... Do, do come up and we'll, we'll say a brief prayer if you'd like. We'll just say a brief prayer over you so that you can be part of uh, the communion. And all who, who follow Jesus are very welcome to come and take communion. So if you're going to just come up for a prayer, just keep your hands down and then we'll know just to pray for you. And as we come to take this bread... Remember, this is, this is representing Jesus' body, and, and the wine represents Jesus' blood, if we were drinking the wine. And he won our peace with God, and peace with each other through that. And the word excruciating was invented because of the cross, because they say it's the most painful thing you can imagine. I don't even like to think about it. 
And the reason Jesus did that is because he loves you and he loves me and he loves the world so much. That's why he did this. So as we come to take the bread tonight, maybe bear those things in mind. He just loves us so much he's prepared to do that for us. So the words are going to come up on the screen and please do um, answer those, uh, those with those words in red. I hope you can see those okay. So why do we share this bread? Listen and we will hear. On the night before he died when darkness had fallen, Jesus took the bread, he gave thanks, he, he broke it and he shared it with his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And after they'd eaten, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and he shared it with his disciples, saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. So how do we follow Jesus Christ? Listen and we will hear. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered into your loving arms. And now with all your saints, we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit today and forever. Amen. And now let's say that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Let's say that together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So Victoria is going to come and help, and we will clean our hands, we'll put our masks on, so we'll keep everything very, very clean. So please do come up as directed. Survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but love.
Lord of all, we thank you so much that you've won everlasting peace for us on the cross. We thank you that you love us so much you did that for us and you, and you continue to love us as you've always loved us. Give us your wisdom, Lord. Help us to draw on your eternal wisdom of the one who knows all. For we ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. So let's, uh, if we have the next slide, let's say together a prayer to send us out into the week. Just have a look at that. The words directly from that passage. So let's say this prayer together. Lord, may we be peacemakers who sow in peace and may we reap a harvest of righteousness. Amen. So may the blessing and peace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So if you're on this side, if you'd like to exit by that door over there, on this side, if you'd like to exit, going that way round, through the door where you came in, the main door. Thank you for coming. Have a great week. <laughs>